Hi all. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. If you are new, welcome. My name is Amira and my channel is all about trying new makeup, talking about new makeup, but also finding new and exciting ways to be inspired by the makeup you already own. If that sounds good to you, I hope you will consider subscribing and if you enjoy today's video, hitting the like button. Today guys, we are going to be talking about makeup and some non-makeup things, some beauty things. Um, I was honestly just going to originally just um, title this video anti-haul <laughs> because that's really how I feel. Like I feel like m the majority of this I have no interest in and I'm so excited about that. I'm really thinking that like, you know, this time of year, this transitional period is usually the, the quietest time for makeup releases which I welcome and it's when all of the brands are sort of gearing up for their fall and holidays, specifically holiday releases. And I feel like once we get towards the end of August, a little more into September, it's gonna be gangbusters. We are going to be inundated. And so for me, this is a great breather. This is a great time to sort of get back in touch with what you already own, loving it, wear it, enjoy it. That's where I'm at right now. I don't know where you guys are, but I, as of now, I'm a little underwhelmed, but I'm okay with that. You know what I mean? So we're going to talk about a few things. I mean, there's a few things on here that have caught my eye and have caught my interest. But when I say a few, I mean like maybe two things, maybe let's get into it. All right, guys. So first up, I want to talk about the new um gucci release so gucci is releasing their second palette it is called the what is it called it's inspired by the flora fragrance and it is their gorgeous flora eyeshadow palette 160 doll hairs for 12 satin metallic and matte shades from pink to blue to neutral they're also coming out with the new glow and care shine lipstick called they met in argentina which is a warm rosewood color with neutral tones and uplifting notes of pink and coral and then also they are coming out with a new flora fragrance it is called the gorgeous jasmine that is $149 now I didn't buy the first one um, I thought it, I thought the packaging was stunning but the shades were not giving me anything that I was interested in you know receiving and the $160 price point made me go excuse you that's more than a Natasha Denona that's more than a Pat McGrath you have not shown me anything that would tell me other than your name being having Gucci on it tells me that your product is worth that much you know um I know that a few people did enjoy the first palette I know Hannah Louise Poston really likes it but I also know a lot of people who just didn't dislike it, didn't like it and didn't feel it was worth the price point specifically people of color specifically you know creatives content creators who are of my skin tone and deeper couldn't really wear it and that's a problem so this new one it looks like it has some deeper shades but it also is full of neutrals really light dusty looking neutrals so again once again the packaging is pretty but like i like that would be lovely sitting on a vanity 160 dollars worth sitting on a vanity not so much now, the Glow and Care lipstick I actually think is really pretty. It's a pink. Again, I'm not I'm not a huge pink lipstick person. I do have some pinks that I love, but I wouldn't I'm not like looking to add a pink to my collection at this point. I will say this that this formula is so nice. I have the shade, I think it's Peggy Taupe. One of my favorite neutral lipsticks. It is so nice on the lips. It's nourishing. It's comfortable. I love that shade. It is $42, but that's about the price of, of all of the Gucci lipsticks. So it's not any more than that. Um, but yeah, if you are interested in this color, I can say that the formula is actually really nice. Next up, we have the Makeup by Mario, the Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Serum. And from what I understand, Mario is, was releasing a new shade of this formulation every Monday or Tuesday or like every at the beginning of every week. Um, so this one was released on the 2nd and it's the like the shade Honey Glow. So it's this brownie taupey nudie shade. I think the tone is beautiful. 
I have not tried anything from, by, from Makeup by Mario. I've honestly been underwhelmed by most of the things that that brand has released. I had really high hopes when it was first announced that he was releasing, you know, he was coming out with his own makeup brand, but I just haven't been, I haven't been excited by anything. Again, this color is pretty, but I don't need lip plumping serum. I'm happy with the plumpness of my lips as they are. I don't like the feeling of those things anyway. And I don't feel like the, the tone is pretty, but I mean, okay. Um, next up I want to talk about is House Labs, Lady Gaga's brand, is coming out with a new foundation. It is called the New Triclone Skin Tech Foundation. It is going to be $45 and it will have 50 shades. It has not been um, revealed when it will be released, but it is coming soon. The shade range actually looks pretty extensive. I am withholding judgment until I see actual, actual swatches like on, you know, an arm. She has some pictures of faces, but I don't know what shades they're wearing. So it's just, you know, for me, it's just pictures, but I would like to see some, some good arm swatches and some corresponding, you know, shade numbers and all that good stuff. But I mean, 50 shades, I feel like, you know, she's pulling a Fenty there and she's like, you know, Hey, Fenty came out 50. I'm going to come out 52. And no, more power to her. I don't have an issue with that. I just hope that the shades are actually, I hope it's not just 50 shades for the sake of 50 shades because we've seen that quite a bit post Fenty Pro Filter Matte Foundation. We've seen a lot of brands try to copy that without having the, the wherewithal to back it up by having a broad range of undertones. So that's what I'm waiting to see. If it's a good shade range, I might pick this up. Next up is this new, this collection that has been revealed for holiday. So we're seeing holiday stuff already, guys. Like I said, you know, it's been a lull. You know, brands are gearing up for holiday, but NARS, NARS and Too Faced tend to be the brands that start to release and to sneak peek their holiday collections sooner than any other brand. And um, I guess NARS was like, we're being Too Faced to the punch this year. So they have shown a sneak peek of their holiday collection which comes with let's see here it comes with the eyeshadow palette the stargaze eyeshadow palette the rising star cheek palette um the starstruck audacious and lipstick in the shade thrust and the light reflecting powder set which was just their light reflecting powder with a little powder puff now look at the Look at the colors in this eyeshadow palette. Did they not release this like last holiday? I feel like this is the same palette that they released last holiday. Am I losing my mind? I feel like I'm not, but I also feel like NARS is gaslighting me and they're like, this is new. And I'm like, no, it's not. They're like, yes, it is, but it isn't. Am I like, do you guys see what I'm talking about? Does this look like the, the palette that they released in holiday for holiday 2021 or was it holiday 2020? They released this almost exact color story one of those holiday seasons same goes for the blush palette the blush palette looks a little more interesting that deeper tone looks different from some some of their like blush palettes that i've seen in the past to me the most exciting thing about it is the star embossing on the blush palette but i have the face palette from that mac came out with a couple some holiday seasons ago that has the star embossing on it so if i want star embossing i can just take that one out and use it i don't need to buy this this blush palette and i don't even find this the like usually nars's holiday packaging is so like bomb so like elevated so cool like those are the things that like even if the palette itself is quite boring i'm usually like oh the packaging though but even this it just looks like they stamped some stars on it it doesn't there's nothing exciting about it to me yeah mm, no summer fridays is coming out with a sheer skin tint it is their first complexion product and it is described as lightweight coverage with a natural finish infused with tiger grass glycerin hyaluronic acid and a variety of emollient emollients including avocado oil vitamin E and vitamin E and it's in 10 shades. It will be available on the 16th on their website and at Sephora. Hmm. Hmm. I like Summer Fridays. I haven't tried a lot from them, but the few things that I've tried, I've really enjoyed. I 
question the shades. I know when people say, oh, it's lightweight, it's sheer. That's all good and fine, but it's a myth to think that just because something is sheer, that means that you need to have a, a limited, you can have a small, like a super small range of shades because you're not, you're not taking into account undertone. You know what I mean? Like you can have 10 shades, but if they're all cool tone or they're all warm tone or they're all neutral and gray toned, they're not going to work for everyone, regardless of how sure they are. People are going to look like they have some kind of cast on their face one way or the other. So for me, I'm like, I, I, I would, I'm intrigued, but I would like more data. You know what I mean? That's how I feel about it. Um, it's probably going to be expensive. Some Fridays is on the higher, at a higher, much higher price point than a lot of other brands that are sort of in the same vein. So I'm one, I'm thinking this is probably going to be more like the 40 plus dollar range. They don't have a price here. Um, I'm also questioning the olive oil because, or excuse me, the avocado oil. Avocado oil is quite heavy and not everybody's skin plays well with heavy oils in their makeup. So I do, I do kind of, that's kind of what gave me pause because my skin doesn't enjoy things like that. So I'm kind of like, mm, I want to try you, but also I don't want to get breakouts. So, you know. Kayali is coming out with a new fragrance and Kayali is the fragrance brand owned by Huda Katan, who owns Huda Beauty. Um, it is the Love Fest Burning Cherry. Top notes are bergamot, raspberry, black cherry. You know, I love bergamot. So I was like, tell me more. The mid notes are rose, damascina essence, jasmine, sambac, heliotrope, and praline. And then the dry down smells like Palo Santo, Guayac Wood, Patchouli Prisma, Peru Balsam, Tonka Beans Absolute, Vetiver Haiti Essence, and Ambretolide. I'm intrigued. I really am. I am still kind of shocked at how much I really enjoy Juicy Eden from Kaali. And it's made me interested to try other things because I find... I'm intrigued now. I have another fragrance from them that I don't dislike. It's just, it reminds me of things I used to like back in the day that I'm not really a fan of now. So I'm giving that to my mother because I don't really wear it, but I think she would like it. Um, but yeah, this Love Fest Burning Cherry. I'm sorry, unpopular opinion. I don't think that that lost cherry scent from Tom Ford is actually all that great. Smelled it, I wasn't impressed, but I would like to smell like a cherry fragrance done to my satisfaction. <laughs> and so I'm intrigued to, to, to like get a, get a sniff of this. I like the little mini bottles. So if, you know, if I'm feeling brave and I might blind buy that and see if I like it, but we'll see. Also being released in tandem with the Love Fest fragrance from Kaali is this new Love Fest collection from Huda Beauty, which involves or includes the Love Fest Obsessions eyeshadow palette, one of her little mini palettes for $29, the Love Fest Cream Blush, two shades, Burning Cherry and Toasted Tangerine, and then there is a Love Fest Tear and Share Lip Quad. It's too many lipsticks and too many tinted silk balms with a cherry scent. There are lashes. There is a liner. It's got a lot going on with this little little baby collection here. Um, I'm not interested in any of this. <laughs> I'm just not like these tones are whatever to me. I I'm just like when I saw this, I was like, I'm interested in the fragrance, and that's it. But yeah, this comes out. August 9th. So it's out as of when I'm filming this. You can purchase these items. Now, this I'm finding a little intriguing. So Fenty is coming out with a new easy drop lit all over a glow enhancer. It is a wear alone or mix with foundation for skin loving glow, four shades, 34 doll hairs. It says coming soon to their website and to Sephora. If you watched my declutter video that I posted last week, I decluttered the Easy Drop Blurring Skin Tint. But even still, this kind of intrigues me because it's not a foundation. It's literally a skin enhancer and like a liquid highlighter that you can mix with things. Does that, does anyone else feel like that sounds really 
Like, I know we have the Hollywood Flawless filter. You guys know I feel about that. I think it's an overrated product. I haven't tried the Halo Glow one from e.l.f. I'm very intrigued. That one's only $15, so significantly less than this one that's $34, and significantly less than the Charlotte Tilbury, which is $44. But I'm still intrigued. I'm still intrigued. I, I need more data, but I'm intrigued. Okay. I want to talk about this because I find it to be utterly absurd. And you can tell me if you agree in the comments. Byredo is coming out with three flavored lip balms and that curved packaging that they use for their mascaras. And this, this is smooth, gliding, genderless. All oh, makeup is genderless, but whatever. I digress. With a transparent and semi-matte finish comes housed in Byredo's signature curved linear metal casing that seals with a satisfying magnetic click and three pastel metallic shades. One, the green one. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. It's T. Alimenta de Ragadir. Infused with the minty flavor of Moroccan tea. Moroccan tea is delicious. If you've never had Moroccan tea, you have to try it. It's amazing. Then they have Bergamot de, ba de Bahia, which is a zingy lime and bergamot. And then they have a chamomile d'Anjou, which is a warm blend of chamomile and bergamot. $50. Yes, I said $50. Byredo is charging you $50 for lip balm that has a sheen to it. I'm a bougie girl. You guys know this about me. If it's something that I really like and I feel it's worth the money, I'll spend it. But $50 for a lip balm? I don't think so. About Face Beauty just announced that they are launching a cheek, it's called Cheek Freak Blush Balm. It's available in 10 shades. It is a blush balm and an ultra creamy lightweight formula that you can wear gorgeously all on its own or over foundation. Um, 18 bucks available now. And let me go to the website or to the, there. The colors, the, as you can see the picture here, the colors look really intriguing, but I wish I could see more. Um, I might go on the website. If I can find other pictures, I'll, I'll try and post a little bit more. But this one here, I'm really interested in that, those orange shades. I think they're stunning. The other, the pinks, whatever. The purple's kind of interesting, but the orangey tones, I'm like, hmm, nice. This is a good segue for me because I want to talk about this new brand that Halsey came out with. So she has her About Face Beauty brand, and she came out recently with a second brand, and I was very puzzled, and I didn't understand why we needed a, a second Halsey brand. It's called AF94. And the the name of it is her initials with the year or her year of birth. It's also, I think, why about face is A and F because it's her initials again, sort of like a, a play on that and the AF94. Like I get how she's tying it in. <sighs> AF94 is exclusively sold at Walmart and it's supposed to be her cheaper brand it's it's the made to play makeup is it's what it's called full color collection it's got crayon eyeshadow crayons it's got lip crayons it's got gloss it's got eyeliner liquid and gel it's got false lashes lipsticks lip tints and cheek tints it's got makeup remover it's got body stickers and it has a, a mist a skin mist nothing is over ten dollars here's my problem First off, let me preface this by saying I love Halsey. I was bumping her last album nonstop all winter long last year and into this year, early this year. I have nothing against Halsey. I don't understand why we needed a second brand. I get what's been said is that she wanted to do a cheaper brand that was more accessible to more of her fans who can't maybe afford to order from her regular range, her normal, like her about face beauty range. That I'm kind of like, but you just lowered the prices of that range because... I don't know if you guys knew or if you remember, but About Face lowered all of its price points by like 30% a few months ago. 
maybe two or three months ago. So the brand is not as already as a whole much cheaper than what it used to be. I think now, I think the, the, the priciest thing is like maybe $20, $22. Not the same as 10. I'm just saying if there was, the point was to create a, a distinction between the two brands, one being this sort of drugstore affordable one and one being the higher end one, wouldn't the smarter move have been to keep that one higher end in price and make this one lower in price? That's just, that's a question I have, you know? But also, again, we have so many brands on the market and we have so many celebrity brands and it's like, okay, Halsey, I, I've tried about face beauty. There are things about, there are products that I like. There's products that I don't like. I don't think it's a bad brand by any means, but I also feel like we are inundated with new celebrity makeup brands inundated. And we didn't need this. And I understand the logic behind it. I can get behind that. But my feeling is if that was the case, Maybe that should have been the brand that, that she came out with in general. If it was about being more accessible, maybe the brand itself, the original brand, should have should have been more accessible from the jump, and then there wouldn't have been a need to create a second brand to do that. You know what I mean? Tell me what you guys think in the comments. I, that was my that's my feeling, but I, I'm happy to hear some other perspectives on it. But I just feel like this was unnecessary. Also, recently it was announced that Glossier will be soon be sold in Sephora. My question is, why didn't Glossier do this a long time ago? <laughs> they've been having some issues financially, I think. they've. They, I know they laid off a bunch of people. And this was like, I think the beginning of this year into early spring, there, were, there was talk about them having financial issues. And they... I, I've never been to a stand like a standalone Glossier store, but I know that they exist, especially in New York. And even way back in the day, I was like, but why though? You know, I mean, they have their direct to consumer website. My thought would have been, why not just move into Sephora? Because I'm sure that the amount of overhead of rent, employee payroll, all of those things probably could have gone towards being in Sephora you know, and then maybe they wouldn't have had to like lay people off. I'm just saying, guys, I have questions. I'm not a Glossier girl. I'm not, as you can tell, like I like color, I like pigment. I don't want, I don't want someone to go, your makeup's done. That's how I feel Glossier. <laughs> I like some of their skincare stuff though, but for me, the, 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 the brand as a whole is, it's, it, it <laughs> It's not my it's not my vibe. It's not my brand on brand for me. But I do find it interesting that they're finally going into Sephora after all these years. I just feel like that's like duh, you guys should have done that already. All right, guys, and that is everything. So let me know in the comments down below. Did I talk about something that you've actually had your eye on? Or are you like me where there's like a few things that you're like, yeah, that's that's kind of nice, but actually, but also no. There's really only one thing now that I've done this, you know, I've completed this video with you guys and I, the only thing that's actually standing out in my mind right now is the, is the Kaoli perfume. That's it. Everything else I can kind of be like, yeah, okay, whatever. Are you guys feeling the same way? I'm getting back into my the phase of being bored with new makeup. I'm in that phase now. And I'm okay with that. My wallet's okay with that. I'm okay with that. My huge makeup collection is also okay with that because it's been getting some love and attention, you know. Let me know in the comments down below, guys. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed, please be sure to subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye now. Mm -hmm.